Hey y'all, we, uh, we just finished up collecting our sap for the day, and uh, to give you guys an update, if you looked in our last video, you saw what the barrel looked like when we first started, and look at it now. So, out of our 64 taps, we got about 55 gallons of, of sap. So, for the, uh, the question of what we do with the sap after we collect it, we store them in these food grade 55 gallon drums and because of mine and Ashley's work schedule we cannot boil down and make maple syrup during the week day we have to wait till the weekend so our sap will stay in this barrel and we have it you know on the shady shady side of the property and any ice that we do accumulate yeah, uh, la this is from la this ice is from last week. We had those really cold days, and our sap buckets froze, and uh, we save that ice because, like, uh, you look at tomorrow's weather. Tomorrow's supposed to be a high of 60, and warm weather is not good for sap. It actually starts to degrade it, and you lose sugar content. So we keep the ice, throw the ice in the barrel, keep this sap cold. Now, when we get into our uh, when we get back into cold weather later on this week, as it's looking, we'll start taking the ice out. Um, the the ice is obviously water. Uh, the, the sap doesn't freeze, as I'm trying to put it, in more of a scientific term. Um, so anyway, so you know, the colder you get, the more ice you get, obviously, and. Uh, bugs are flying around you just uh you take the ice out and the more ice you take out the more water you take out and it uh makes your boiling time go a little bit quicker because you have a higher concentrated uh, sugar percentage as i uh babble on here but yeah so what i'm actually going to do is uh go grab my other barrel and transfer some of this into uh into the other one just so we don't have as much in one barrel but uh yeah that sap collection takes about uh takes about an hour and you know we're we're always looking to make our process more efficient and one thing i'm considering is getting some kind of a water transfer pump where i can uh where i could put my barrel down in the woods there where a majority of my buckets are collect all the sap down there and then run the pump either up to here relay it to another barrel here and then relay it up even further i'm not sure but our uh, our sap collection right now is is rather labor intensive it makes for a good workout but something in the uh in the future i'd like to change but like i mentioned before i'm i don't know too much about water pumps or or even how to go about setting something up like that. But yeah, after you guys have, I'll say it every video, we're gonna, we're actually gonna try to do more of these videos, uh, instructional, educational type of thing. But uh, one did as something like, do you guys have any questions, comments, suggestions on how to do anything better? Um, It'd be greatly appreciated, and we'll answer any questions you guys have. I see, uh, Mark, you're you're watching this right now, and I'd love to get a four wheeler. It would make things a lot easier, heck of a lot easier. But unfortunately, four wheelers cost money, and we're limited on funding, and so we got to do it the hard way till we can save up for something. But. But yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna finish up here with a little bit of daylight I have left, and uh, we'll head back up to the house to grab that barrel and I'll show you guys kind of kind of what's going on here. A garden is all put away for the winter. So from that black. What we'll do on Saturday is 
Ashley, she does the sugaring. She'll, she'll transfer the sap to the pans, and my job is bringing the sap up from down there back up to here. And I dismantled it. I actually cemented that. We had a little bit of a smoke leak, so because of the warm temperatures, I uh, decided to... I am. Um, decided to cement that real quick. And we'll put it back together, but this is what it looks like when there aren't pans on it and the stack's down. Cooler's down and have our wood pile covered. But, uh, 